Of course, remote learning isn't going away overnight. And to say the past year of Zoom classes has been hard on kids and their families would be an exercise in understatement. Some, with resources, opted early on to pull them and hire tutors to teach students in small groups. They've become known as learning pods to ease the burden. But for a lot of families, that approach is just not financially feasible. That's where the Community Learning Collaborative comes in. It's a group of local nonprofits that primarily serve low-income black and Latino kids in and around Boston. Back in the fall, they launched more than a dozen free pods around the city with teachers and mentors, two meals a day, and a chance to learn and play together with other kids. I'm joined now by representatives of two of the organizations involved, Amanda Fernandez, co-founder of Latinos for Education, and Vanessa Calderon-Rosado. She's the executor, executive director of, and apologies in advance, Inquilinos Boricuas Anaxion. Uh, I hope I got that close. Eba, uh, Amanda, and Vanessa, thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Jim, and I'm actually quite impressed with the pronunciation of Inquilinos Boricuas in Acción. Good job. I'm pretty impressed with myself, to be very honest, so thank you. Vanessa, starting with you, again, can you explain how these pods typically work? Sure, uh, and again, thank you for having us today in your sure. show. Um, the pods work Monday through Friday, and first, as you mentioned, we came together thinking how do we continue to support children who are already experiencing an achievement mm -hmm. gap? And with equity and justice as our framework, how do we really create opportunities for them and do what families with financial means were able to do? So mm -hmm. thanks to the support from philanthropy, including the Lynch Foundation, we created the pods to run Monday through Friday from 8 to 4 or 5 p.m., uh, supporting the children with academic support right in the classroom so they can connect virtually to their classes and at the same time getting social emotional supports and the meals and the day varies by pod but the key thing here is that there are a small group of kids eight to twelve kids only per pod. Amanda is it far enough along for you to be able to judge whether or not this effort has been a success? So we have some really positive early indications about the success of the learning pods. We regularly check in with the staff at the site level, and we've had multiple conversations with families and students. So at this point, we have some pretty strong anecdotal data that supports the experience being positive for students and families. And we've heard some pretty amazing quotes from family members about their children feeling safe, supported, and frankly loved in our environment. And it gives a feeling of peace for the families who may not have another opportunity or place to send their children during the school day. So uh, early indications are that we are seeing a lot of good success. At the same time, we have um, put in a number of sort of metrics that we want to track and follow throughout the um, throughout the pod experience. So we'll be tracking more information. I love and, hearing and that. And I would like actually. to add to, to that, Jim, that anecdotally, sure. in addition, uh, teachers have told us and have told our teachers in the pods that they have seen either great progress in the academics of the children in our pods or uh, additional, you know, real attention or great attendance. So we're seeing anecdotally that not only children and families, but also teachers Teach. are seeing That's great, a great point. That's fabulous. You know, Vanessa, staying with you for a second, you know, at some point, uh, we were just talking to the heads of the teachers' unions, at some point we're going to return to semi-normalcy in the schools, but semi-normalcy is not good enough, as we know. So when I was reading about what you guys are doing, is there some use for pods like this, even in the future, to supplement the learning that kids get? in a, a, a classroom? I mean, that seems to me to be the great takeaway from this story. Is that possible, Vanessa? We believe so. Uh, in fact, this whole idea came about the four of us coming together to reimagine education, to really think what can we do to support our children? And yes, it is possible. Even when schools reopen in April, as the Commissioner of Education just announced uh, earlier, we believe that there's room for the pods to continue to support children in smaller environments and to really support their academic uh, growth. 
By the way, when you say the four of you, I feel bad. The other two organizations are the Y of Boston and the base, yeah. correct? Am I, am I, I'm right about yeah. that, right? Yeah. That's right. Great, great so or, we'd both. be remiss. But, well, I was remiss, but I'm not remiss anymore. So, Amanda, do you agree with that, uh, it, that, that, that there is a value when kids uh, do return to traditional classrooms to use this creatively to supplement, hopefully, for far more kids than you've been uh, fortunate enough to serve so far? you agree with that? I, I do. It's been a privilege to be a part of this work because what we are seeing is a new opportunity to rethink some of the ways in which we are supporting learning for our students and supporting families. So what we are doing in the pods is incorporating what we would like to see in the educational experience of our students. So we incorporate mental health opportunities. We have the teachers who share the backgrounds of the students. We are collaborative leaders who all are Black and Latino leaders in the community who have connections and deep ties in the community. And these are all ingredients to what we would like to see as a springboard for how we might reimagine education in the future. We're learning so much that we know can be applied to the future experience that we know has to be in place right now, given the inequities that have been exacerbated throughout this pandemic. The problems were there before, as we all know, the pandemic has made it worse, and we think we have a possible opportunity to make it better for our students and families and start closing the gaps. Amanda, Vanessa, I think the idea is just fabulous. Congratulations to you and your two colleagues, and I hope the money is there. I hope foundations are listening, and I hope they support it, and I hope to get an update from you again in the future. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you, James. Thank, Thank you. you for having us.